everybody. This is Tony Nash with Complete Intelligence. Thanks for joining us uh, for another quick hit. Uh, today, we're talking with Tracy Shuchart. Everybody knows who she is, and we're really lucky to have a few minutes of her time today uh, to talk about markets and really understand what's happening uh, with a lot of the volatility and a lot of things that are happening in markets today. Tracy, thanks so much for taking time to talk to us today. Absolutely. Thank you for, for having me. <laughs> of course. Um, so, you know, I've been focused for the past few weeks on the dollar, on Chinese yen, and on industrial metals. Um, can you, let's take the dollar first. Can you talk to me a little bit about your view on the dollar? You know, what's happening with, say, the Treasury Fed and some of their views of the dollar, and how is that spreading out to markets? Right. Well, I think right now we have a little bit of mixed messaging, right? So mm -hmm. we have the Fed that wants a weaker dollar, but then we have Yellen who's come in and she um, has been talking about, you know, she wants strong dollar, strong dollar policy. And so I think that markets are kind of uh, confused right now as to mm -hmm. um, do we want a weaker dollar? Do we want a stronger dollar? Right. right. And so we're seeing kind of a lot of volatility in the markets um, because of that sentiment. So who, who do you think is going to win? So I, <laughs> you know, I think there could be, you know, I think that I, I think Yellen's going to win. I think we're gonna, probably yeah. going to get a little bit of a stronger dollar. I don't think we're going to see a hundred, right. you know, anytime soon again, but, um, you know, ultimately, um, you know, that's, you know, we've seen stronger dollar when she was at the Fed, we, you know, and uh, she's come in right now and said that she wants a stronger dollar. So um, I would say we probably, you know, have at least a little bit more elevated than, you know, the low that we just had at what, 80, sure. 89 or whatever. Yeah, I think things are so stretched right now that even a slightly marginally stronger dollar, let's say to 95 or something like that, uh, DXY would, would really impact markets in a big way. Um, I've been watching CNY. I watch it really closely. And, you know, we bottomed out or let's say it appreciated a lot over the last six months. Right. It feels like we bottomed out and it's weakening again. Um, what does that mean to you? I mean, obviously, second largest economy in the world, they manufacture everything. So right. what what is the impact of that? Well, I mean, uh, the impact obviously, you know, has will have a lot to do with manufacturing, with exports, right, um, uh, and and things of that nature. So if they start, you know, if their uh, currency starts depreciating again, you know, they're going to sort of um, export that uh, mm -hmm. deflation to the rest of the world. Oh, I, you know, I don't, it's just starting to kind of bounce now, right. Mm -hmm. Um, over the last week or so. Um, but I don't think, you know, it, unless we have another trade war, which hopefully, you know, that doesn't happen. I don't think we're probably going to see like seven, seven, seven plus. I mean, I remember last time we were talking about it, we were talking about it's going to be 720 and you nailed that. <laughs> You know, it's definitely something to keep an eye on, uh, obviously, because they're such a big purchaser and because they're such a big exporter. Right. Yeah, we're, we're expecting, say, 6.6 six, uh, this month, hit it sometime this month, then continue to weaken, but not dramatically. We're expecting a pretty managed weakening of CNY, barring, you know, some event. Um, right. So, So what... What I've been observing uh, as we've had a very strong CNY over the past six months is hoarding of industrial metals. And we've seen that in things like the copper price. Right. Um, and so um, have you seen that yourself? And with a stronger, sorry, with a weaker CNY, um, 
what does that do to some of those industrial metals prices in, in terms of magnitude, not necessarily specific levels, but what do you think right. that does to industrial metals prices? Well, I think, I mean, we've been seeing that across all industrial metals, right? It hasn't just been copper. It's been iron ore. It's been yeah. aluminum. It's been nickel. Um, so we've seen that across uh, all of those. And, you know, it's been, China likes to hoard, right? So mm -hmm. um, when everything was very cheap, like last summer, right? When everything kind of bottomed out, mm -hmm. um, they started purchasing a lot and when, and and then we also had problems with supply problems because mm -hmm. of COVID, right? So um, prices really accelerated. Um, and then then suddenly we just had China's currency pretty much, well, well what, over the last six months kind of um, strengthened. So I think if we, they, I think we'll probably see a pullback in those prices, right? Um, and it'll be, partly because of their currency, if they allow that to depreciate a little bit. Um, and then also as extended supply comes back on the market. Um, but, you know, it's even getting to the point now where if you look at oil, oil prices are getting really high too. We'll likely probably see China uh, scale back on, on purchases probably sure. a little bit going forward. Um, just because prices are so high, or we will see them, which we're seeing now, is buy more from Iran because sure. they can get it. They need the it. money. They they <laughs> they need the money. They get it at a great discount, right? They, it's cheap. Yep. Um, and so, um, you know, if and if they start buying more from Iran, right, that takes it away from uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia, who are their two largest. Uh, Sure. So it's interesting when I look at Chinese consumption, at least over the past, say, 15 months, there's been almost an inverse relationship of CNY to USD uh, and, um, right. and, say, industrial metals prices. Really, it looks like a mirror. Crude oil doesn't look that way. It's really interesting how the crude price in CNY, there really isn't that type of relationship. So one would expect that if uh, CNY devalues, they'll necessarily cut back on purchases. Um, I would argue, and I could be wrong here, that it's not necessarily the currency that would cause them to cut back on purchases. They've hoarded and stored so much that they don't necessarily need to keep purchasing what they have been. Is that fair to say? Right. Yeah. I mean, and again, I mean, they still, uh, I mean, they still like to, to hoard a lot. I mean, really, the between January and February, they were still up six percent uh, year over year, right? Right. Um, where January was very high, February was uh, lower, but the, the median price because they have holiday during February. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, the oil is kind of a kind of different. It's not really related so much to their currency because you have outside. Um, factors such as, you know, OPEC, um, right. which has uh, really taken a lot off the market. They've taken 8% off the market and they've held that over again for another month. Um, right. And the fundamentals are improving. I mean, the fundamentals are really improving with oil. Um, you know, I've, I've been seeing a lot of strength in the market over the last, you know, eight months, probably six, eight months um, that I've been noting. Uh, so I think there's a lot more that that market is 
so much bigger. They're not, you know, U.S. is the world's largest consumer. So um, whereas you look at something like industrial metals, they are the world's largest consumer. For sure. Uh, so I think before when we're talking about crude oil, because it's spread out so much, uh, they don't really have that much pull on the market per se right. um, that they would in, in, in metals markets. Right. And I'll, I'll remind you, I'm sure you remember this. When we spoke in Q2 of 2020, you said it would be Q2 of 21 before we even started to return to normal consumption patterns for crude um, and downstream right. products. So I think you hit that spot on and it's pretty amazing to see. I think I had hoped that it would return sooner, <laughs> but of course it didn't. So anyway, Tracy, thanks right. so much for your time. I really appreciate it. This is always just incredibly valuable for us to hear what you're thinking. So thanks so much.